Listen to this because this is a pretty massive adventure even in Ava's world. I am currently on Socotra Island, which is a wild and remote island in the middle of the Gulf of Aden and it belongs to Yemen. And not only that, I am just about to embark on a four day trek into the wilderness of the island with a bunch of camels as our pack animals. This is probably going to be my most adventurous vlog to date. Hey, camel, 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 camel. I'm not sure what you say to camels to get their attention, but this seems to be working. Hey, camel, camel, camel. Ah, much better. Adnan, what are we doing here? We are packing the luggage, the stuff. And all of this is going to go on the back of those camels? Yes, of course. The packing ritual is probably the most important and our professional, <laughs> professional guides <laughs> knew exactly what they were doing. But I had other priorities. This is the traditional way to wear a turban and our guide, Adnan, yeah. is basically the person that ties it for me pretty much every single day and today is no exception because we're heading out into the super scorching hot mountains so we need some head protection right according to adnan this turban was meant to keep my head at just the perfect temperature hmm. let's see Woo. <laughs> ready to go and so loaded up we set off on the first leg of the trek which was meant to take six hours in the 30 degree heat it's only been about 10 minutes of hiking so far and I've already got sweat pouring down my face. I think I must have tried all of the world's possible configurations of the turban, but it didn't help with the heat. Still really hot. <sighs> the only thing that actually helped was a small stream on the side of the trail. But you guys probably don't want to see my sweaty face anymore, do ya? <laughs> Let's take a look at some landscapes. As soon as the dusty trails turned green, the breeze also came in and uh, finally I felt like I was home. It's only been about five hours of hiking, but we suddenly found ourselves in a completely different world and landscape. This honestly just looks like, I don't know, the Scottish Highlands, New Zealand. I did not expect to see this kind of landscape right here in the Middle East. I also didn't expect camels to be quite so mountain ready, but they really were. We've arrived. This is going to be our camping spot for the next couple of nights. Can you believe it? What a view. In the company of this beautiful nature, afternoon turned into evening and evening turned into a quiet night. And then the next morning came in heavily. Welcome to day two of this Socotra trek. Basically what we're doing is we're trying to reach one of the highest points on the island, but we don't really know where it is. So this whole day is all about looking for that one peak. Apparently we're meant to be climbing that peak over there. Is that right? Yes. That one? No. Yes. How? It's too much. Mushkil. 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 No, no mushkil. No mushkil? No, no mushkil. No problem? Yeah, it seemed like a whole lot of mushkil to me. And by the way, we were already pretty exhausted from having been trekking for several hours. How are we gonna do this? Well, our guide decided to go barefoot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. These are my shoes. I'm not taking these off anytime soon. Wow. Okay. Not for the faint hearted. This is the kind of rock where you have to work with your hands, your arms, and your legs. It's pretty steep. It's actually pretty much vertical. Woo! Yep, this wall was really 
really vertical and we had no climbing equipment no lines no safety gear nothing like that we just tried our best and we kept on climbing whatever the trail threw at us and then eventually right there is the long-awaited summit <laughs> almost there just a few more steps just a few more steps Oh my god, this is epic! <laughs> If you've ever climbed a peak before in your life, no matter how tall or small, you know this feeling. The feeling of having achieved something. The feeling of having walked towards your goals and having reached them. The feeling of being somewhere on top of something. But that feeling didn't last very long in this case because as soon as the clouds started rolling in really fast we knew that we had to get back down with grace and ease of course i'm stuck literally stuck <laughs> Don't ask me how, but somehow we managed to get back down to camp in one piece. But it was actually only on the following morning, the last day of the trek, that I found my true summit. And finally, after, well, nearly three days of walking, I'm here in the place that I've been looking forward to seeing the most. This is a traditional home of someone who lives in these mountains full time no electricity no water full time mountain living this is Faiz and he will show us around his mountain home here in Sakotra yes <laughs> Faiz is a nice sociable young man so why does he live all alone in these mountains well his work brings him here me Faiz Abdullah Ahmed Aam ya la sana fi had al mkan al musammi had al mkan al musammi dhazaz Whenever he is not taking care of his animals, Faiz likes to spend time right here in his mountain home. A very traditional mountain home at that. It's a simple life. He doesn't have much bar a radio, maybe a lamp here and there, and a couple of special items like this one to keep milk and yogurt, and his janbia, the traditional Yemeni knife. Oh, wait, there's one more thing that he really wanted to show us, of course. And this, a present that he got from a few tourists a few years ago. Out of this entire trip, the home of Faiz is the thing that made the deepest impression on me. This man living alone, assuring us that he is happy here in the mountains and he would rather live nowhere else, just here. And as much as we would have loved to stay with Faiz and spend more time with him, we had to get going to our own homes and back to our own very different kind of reality. Because you see, new peaks are always waiting just around the corner. Uh -huh.